Yeah, what's up? Welcome to the What More Can I Say podcast. How everybody doing? What's up? What's up? I'm one of your hosts, Tom Paul. Let's go ahead and get right into my other co-host, the lady of the pod, Kiki. What's up? Hey, guys. Happy Election Day. Yeah. Happy Election Day. Mm-hmm. Happy Election Day. Hope you all went out and voted this week. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, I'm gonna say, yeah, okay, all right, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. When, yes. When, this, when this airs, I would have voted, Kiki. When this okay. airs. All right. I, I'm the type, I like I like the rush of election day. I'm okay. sorry, I don't want an early vote. I like the, I like the rush. You want to yeah. set a line no and with people. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like, I like that. I like the arguments. I want all that. I want the smoke. <laughs> you want all the smoke. Hey, and I the guy that wants it. all the smoke, Zach, go ahead and introduce yourself. Ooh. Zach Bug, what's up? What's up, y'all? Um, quick announcement. Just want to let y'all know, ladies, this Halloween, y'all wore out them little ninja outfits. Everybody. Okay. <laughs> it, it was a lot of ninjas out there. It was. Cold I, as fuck. It was a lot of them. You saw them all. They all was doing the same pose, a little crotch pose. I was like, girl. <laughs> Fashion. I like them all. had a I, mean ninja costume. I was a double tapping <laughs> fool. <laughs> y'all right? Bernice, double tap. <laughs> like, all right. Let me go back again, Bernice. I'm unlike Bernice's picture. We liked it again about four times. Like, maybe you see it, baby. Oh <laughs> maybe you see God. it. Oh, he I ain't know. He's one of those. Everybody got a crush, man. Anyway. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Shout, shout out to Hennessy. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, there we go. Nice little bottle of XO. I wanted to just sh- share that with everybody. That I'm mm-hmm. drinking XO. Uh, okay. That was a quick okay. sponsorship plug. That was sponsorship plug. I'll split a little bit of the bread with y'all. Okay. okay. <laughs> right. Let's let's go ahead and jump right to it, man. Let's get right into it. Uh, this is going to be something we're going to talk about actually for the next couple weeks. Uh, I'm actually going to have a chance to interview one of the participants in this versus uh, in the next week or so, and it's Jeezy and Ti's battle. After a, a couple weeks of marinating on it, uh, Zach, how you feeling? You changed your mind? You swayed anyway? No, I think I actually think I changed your mind because I saw Tone. You was right, and I saw on your Instagram you said it looks like Ti may be in trouble. But I remember on the pod you was talking about how Ti was gonna smoke Jeezy. And I was just like, it's, we're talking 20 songs, and Jeezy hit, songs hit closer to your soul than T.I. So did you change your mind? Uh, well, I mean, I definitely could jump in there. Uh, I, I think T.I. is in trouble. I played Thug Motivation, and I listened to T.I.'s best album a, a couple times. Uh, I don't think T.I. has a body where they can compete with Thug Motivation. He just no. can't. Standing ovation, uh, it just it's so many yeah. records on there, man. He's got so many Jay Z features. And I mean, Jeezy was the voice of the drug dealer renaissance. That's it. I mean, he was it. He was talking about Benny Hanna's and Houston's mm-hmm. and Visa <laughs> jeans. And I just it took me back. It took me back to all the clubs that I've ever hosted in my entire life, mm-hmm. where I've seen. Tons of hustlers and just it, it just brought back a happy happy time in my life. I was like, I remember when, yeah, man, Jeezy is the is the drug dealer's uh the drug dealer Renaissance voice, man. Kiki, how are you feeling about it? You know, I did not expect that from you, Tone. I thought you would have held on to the light skin, you know, alliance with T.I. I thought you were <laughs> gonna ride that out to the end. Now, as for me and my house, listen, I had kicked it with my brothers yesterday. Shout out Serge and Cam. And we went literally through all they songs yesterday, right? Okay. Maybe T.I. lost so bad in this battle. <laughs> and I, don't know, I don't know if it was me, because I was a T.I. representative, and I probably didn't do a good job. But <laughs> when my brothers them start playing them Jeezy songs, baby, you would have thought I was at an HBCU, honey, would have been in. It was all, it was all bad. So, you know, Zach, I would like to apologize. You called Thank me you. from the beginning. Thank you. And you know, I, I, it got so bad, y'all. I started talking about, well, T.I. was featured on Soldier with Destiny's Child. Like, <laughs> it got that, it got that bad. So, you know, Jeezy is definitely going to win this because we just, we miss Jeezy. You know what I'm saying? And we, yeah. we connect to those songs. Yeah. Right. yeah. Right. It, it, when you told, it brought you to the club. Um, I wasn't old enough to go to the club like that yet when Jeezy was out. 
So I, it took me to high school. It yep. took me to high school when we first got, when my boy was, he got the first car out of everybody on the block. And you know in high school, if one person got a car, 12 of y'all are riding. Everybody, everybody got a car. In your car. Period. So, yep. and, and what was we bumping? The motivation. It brought me back to a great time. You'd be like, oh, I'll play that, play that when we pull up. You'd be like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> You know you can hit the song the, before you pull up. Yes. Man, it's the A. Oh, and then you like, hey. oh, this is this is insanity. Yep. That the thing, like you said, I tried it, Kiki. I tried to have my own verses. I said, I'm gonna listen to Thug Motivation. Then I'm gonna listen to some TI. And I just was like, I don't think <laughs> TI TI got some records that age well. Yep. But Thug Motivation, a lot of those records aged very well. Way more than TI's. I think TI is gonna get smoked. TI is still a good rapper, <laughs> but he is going to get smoked. And I predict it'll be something somewhere along the lines of 15 to 5. Oh Lord. Look, I'm not gonna give a score. I'm not gonna do you like that, TI. Now, I, you know, I will give you something for whatever you like, but Rihanna, whatever you like, yeah, ASAP, yes. oh. 24s, yes. and rubber band man. And that's after it. that. And may, okay, six. One of the records with Justin Timberlake. He just say one of the. I, he just said. Now those were right. the same records. Those were the same records, Kiki, that he brought up last pod that he said was going to beat Jeezy. And I was with and him. I, I was. And I said, him. no way. It's no way. Have you heard Jeezy? Yeah. Yeah. You got us on that, Zach. I, we had to do our homework. And and after yeah. you know, and that's the Kiki that's the drug motivation stuff. But what 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 you gonna do when he plays? just for nostalgia, just for the way the country is right now. When he plays My President, my president is Black, yes. it's going to bring a different feeling to when you felt really good that Obama was elected president, bro. Mm -hmm. I got my foot ran over that night. I what? never forget. Yeah, my foot, foot ran got ran over. over. Oh. I, was, I was in college. Obama won. We did Fisk University is right down the street from Tennessee State. Mm -hmm. They're on the yeah. same street. So we was like, Everybody was lit. Everybody was turned up. We were drunk. We played the music out, and they was like, "Hey, let's 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 ride the fist for no reason. We've never rode the fist before in our lives. We don't do this normally. We don't do this normally. Next thing you know, it's people got old schools out, and we're just walking to Fish University. I was in the back seat, back seat of my boy Kyle. I was outside at the light, like, yeah, my president is black. The light turned green. My boy thought I was in the car. He was drunk, and he rolled over my foot. So, uh, yeah. That's Did it I, break? I was so lit, bro. I don't even really? remember. I just know the next day out, it hurt. It didn't hurt. It didn't hurt while it happened. It did strong. not hurt that night. You got those strong Negro spiritual feet. Yeah. <laughs> God, yeah, I don't know how you didn't feel that, Zach. Now, come on. I didn't feel it. I was, man, it was a great night. He probably, Ooh, made that man. probably stepped on the Yeah, it's done, bro. Ooh. Yeah, it's 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 bad. And the great thing about it is I'm gonna we're gonna get a chance and all the people to watch the pod and of course we'll put it on the pod page as well. Is that man, is they're gonna I'll get a chance, people get a chance to see me ask him, Do you think you're gonna smoke TI? Yes. I wonder what he's gonna say. Yes. Cause if he doesn't say anything, I'm gonna say, fam, you're gonna smoke TI. <laughs> and I like TI. That's the thing. People think if TI loses the battle, it makes him a bad rapper. No. T.I. and Jeezy, our first ballot rapper Hall of Famers. <clears throat> Easily. Hands For down. Sure. Yeah. But when they go against each other, ooh, Thug Motivation is one of the best albums of, of hip-hop history. It's period. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Hey, let's keep it going. Let's go ahead. Uh, let's talk about, we're talking about voting. Who you going to vote for, T.I. and Jeezy? Well, let's get to this. Uh, the election. Let's talk <laughs> election. Um, everybody's coming out of the woodwork. You got Lil Wayne, you got Kodak Black, uh, they're endorsing Trump. Lil Wayne went as far as took a picture with President Trump. There's been other people, other rappers that have been getting text messages by Trump's uh people to come take those photo ops and meet people and be in that circle. Uh, what do you how are you feeling about President Trump reaching out to the hip hop community this late in the game? Kiki, let me hear from you. You know, I, w I can't lie. When I saw the picture of Lil Wayne, I was so mad. I was like, Wayne, what is this? 
And who fat? Where he even find you at? You ain't been to the BET Awards in years. We can't find you for nothing that's going on. You know where? I, how you get that with Trump? I was very <laughs> upset when I saw that photo. But then I had to realize, like, am I gonna change my vote because Lil Wayne took a picture? No. Like, so he really don't have that much influence like that in the culture to the point where they're swaying votes. You know what I'm saying? And it's really a slap in the face and an insult that Trump thinks that him going to tap on a few rappers is going to get us to change our minds or to vote for him or whatever. So it just goes to show what he thinks of us. You wouldn't get right. Lil Wayne, okay? Now, we know Lil Wayne never been to school. We know Lil Wayne that shot himself before. We know Lil Wayne is, in, you know, he in all these bad contracts. You know, we know he's a little off, okay? We know this. So you think Lil Wayne going to be the one to change our minds I feel insulted, okay? You could have now, if T.I. go over there, then we in trouble. Then it's, then it's like, hold on, what's going on? Trump must, guess, must be passing out something real good. But Lil Wayne, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how he ended up there. It's, yeah, I was upset. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, all right, Zach. When you saw this, man, even you got people that have not said anything political in their lives up until this moment, like a little punk who says he'll leave America if Trump doesn't win, uh, <laughs> what are you thinking about all of this, man? Him getting all of these rappers that, in a way, a little bit irrelevant to the culture and not going to move the needle. Well, the thing is, this just shows that first thing I thought when I saw that picture and I heard Trump talk about Lil Wayne, I realized that Trump has no idea who you are, Lil Wayne. He has no <laughs> idea. He has no clue who you are. Yeah. He just... He just knows you're a black guy with dress. I promise he doesn't know you. He said, yeah, Lil Wayne. He said, Lil Wayne came, wanted to talk to me. Came, we talked. He's an activist. And that's when I knew he didn't know who Lil Wayne was because he called Lil Wayne an activist. Yep. No, what they were saying, Trump, is that he drank activists <laughs> in his cup. He was not a real activist. He thought he was a real activist. And we care about Lil Wayne's political opinions. If, if Lil Wayne tells me he endorses this rapper, this dude can spit, this my, is this my new rapper coming up, I can respect that from Lil Wayne. You know what I'm saying? If Lil Wayne says I'm in a bad contract with Baby, free me, I'm with you, Lil Wayne. You probably are in a bad contract. If Lil Wayne, you know, gets into it one of his baby moms, I usually, I'm going to try to side with Lil Wayne, see what he's talking about. But if Lil Wayne is telling me who to vote for up there smiling with that one long dread <laughs> next to Trump, that's the nastiest dread in the world, man. That lot got to go, man. <laughs> yeah, that, that, and it's just blonde and weird. And I'm just, I'm looking at him. It looked like he tried to dress up and stuff. I was just like, dude, this is- I hated that cardigan or whatever that sweater was. Yeah, I hated, I hated the cardigan. It was like, he put on his presidential cardigan. Like, you didn't even come like Wayne. He's like, yeah. how much did Trump pay you, bro? He and if that's- Look, this and, if he, and if he paid you, just tell us. All he has to do is put hashtag ad. And yes. I will understand. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Look, Put hashtag ad, and I wouldn't trip, bro. Mm -hmm. The whole thing is a farce. And this is the thing <laughs> Trump needs to get mad. I use farce. I don't know where that came from. What the hell? How did that come out? Uh, uh, it is. That's the XO. All right. Anyway, like, I'm like, Trump needs to hire. This lets me know that there's always going to be a place for real African-Americans to get into these poli or these politicians to say, and when I say real African-Americans, I mean a part of the culture that's connected to the culture to help these politicians out. I, Trump is going to get the wrong people. You got, you got Kodak Black speaking out. You got Lil Wayne. We like Wayne, but he's not relevant anymore. He's not, it is what it is. We love Wayne to death, but he's not relevant. And, it's, and this is the thing, Joe Biden's people stop Joe Biden from talking. After the Cardi B fiasco, he's not <laughs> said another word to a black person because outside of Charlemagne, because he'll mess it up. What they did do is get them to endorse him really cool. And the, you got Beyonce, yeah. really cool. Yeah. She did it really cool. You got Eminem doing it really cool. Mm -hmm. You got all of these people doing it really cool, but not interacting with Biden, because if they interact with him, it's going to look like a hillbilly talking to a black person. Like, well, all right, now, what you got to go? Like, what? Hey, like, you talking, bro? I don't know, bro. He, uh, yeah. yeah uh, what? 
<laughs> it upsets me. Yeah. It upsets me. And then it takes us back to that political commercial mm -hmm. that the Trump campaign is running. Yeah. What they have and what he talks about black folks and them attacking your family and saying it doesn't matter, you know, what they've gone through. If we want to, it's that's a bad look for them. So yeah. the thing of it is, is he could never talk to black people again, ever, <laughs> because he does. He does not know how to interact with us. He doesn't, and it seems forced, and it seems and it's really uncomfortable, and it's really cringy. Yeah. And anybody that watches this, they'll they'll agree with me. Yeah, I hate when and, and I just I just think that Trump is going about it the wrong way. We all know what the black folks that are endorsing Trump, they all try to finesse some tax write-offs. They all try to finesse <laughs> having that power in the White House. If you really want to get somebody, Trump, you get Diddy. That's who you get. Well, you, get, you get Oprah, who you used to be friends with. You get people that will, or people make, like you said, T.I., that if they endorse you, it's going to have a lot of us doing this. Wow, what? Right. What's really going on? When you get T, when you get a nasty, dreaded little Wayne and an imprisoned <laughs> Kodak Black and right. little punk behind you, we all looking at you super but this, great. Like, that's what I'm trying to tell you. What I'm trying to get y'all to understand is Trump didn't ask for none of them people to say nothing. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You think they mm -hmm. just came in? He said, he said, Lil Wayne called me. He said he wanted to meet. That's what Trump said. He said he wanted to meet. I met with him. He must be an activist or something. Good guy. And that's all he said. He didn't even try to get no fame off the Lil Wayne stuff. Trump didn't post Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne posted Trump and told about the plan and all that. Trump said two, three words about him. He wasn't like, yeah, I got Lil Wayne. You know, he didn't say it in his speech. He said it when he was asked about it in an interview. He said something about Lil Wayne. Lil Pump, you know Trump does not know Lil Pump. We can just no. end that there. No, we and, can't tell him. And Kodak Black is trying to get out of jail. So you <laughs> know he didn't ask for it. Kodak Black, he was just like, hey, I can help you. Just please get me out. That's all that tweet said. It was like, hey, I will endorse you if you get me out of jail. Trump didn't even retweet him. <laughs> so what I'm trying to tell you is these these rappers are going for, with their own agenda of why they coming at this man. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, what's his name trying to get fame, uh, clout, Lil Pump trying to get clout off his name. Lil Wayne, still don't know what Lil Wayne was doing. I, I don't get what Lil Wayne was doing. And he got tax problems happening. Kodak trying to get out of jail. It has to be tax problems. So you said all the rappers was <laughs> like, child, Trump out here trying to get some friends. Let's call him and we can get, like, he the, he the plug, almost. Right. He the plug. He the plug. And they know that, I mean, somebody told them, I, I said this before, we all know our president had been around a lot of black people before. A lot. He appeared on, on on rap shows. Plenty of rappers put his name in there. They've had interactions with him. Tons of people. When he first started running, you had Steve Harvey go up and meet with him. You had Kanye, of course, go up and meet with him. You had tons of like, like it's some it's some it's some wild stuff with this. That I, I keep saying, I look at this whole election just like my thoughts is nasty. It's the and, and I'll say it again, I'll keep saying it. I saw a meme, it sums it up. God, if you ran out of presidents, just say so. <laughs> just it say so. That's true. Hey, I man, let's go ahead and switch it up, though. Zach, you got something else to add to it? No, I was uh, Go ahead, yeah, Kiki. I was saying that I, I think it is a little weird that people like Beyonce literally wait until the day before the election to endorse Biden. So that speaks volumes as well. Like, these people have not been vocal about Biden until now. So I think that tells a message, too. So that, that was... Yeah, my little because they was looking, they was looking at that whole commercial and that speech that Biden made years ago <laughs> in the nineties, and all was like, yeah, ah, yeah. Ah. yeah, it's a nasty speech. Yeah. It's nasty, and then you think about all the nasty things that Trump has said, and you think about all the people that follow Trump and all of the hillbillies that are waiting to just they 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 stacking guns up. They want they it's it's oh, insanity. Yeah. Yeah, it's two saying. candidates that you have to literally choose the lesser of two evils. It's what, it, and it's on you, it's your decision, mm -hmm. but. Man, but you, you gotta go get hit. I mean, you gotta just go on here and hit Biden, man. You just I, gotta I'm go. Not, I'm not gonna, you gotta pick whoever you wanna, I'm not, I'm not here to get anybody, uh, cause I've heard people put up great arguments for both. I'm gonna vote, I'm not gonna tell anybody who I'm voting for, it's my personal decision. Um, 
I, I think that what Trump is doing, what Trump did, the whole the whole thing, because I have tons of Latin friends, tons of Hispanic friends, and tons of friends that I grew up with that were first generation Americans, where they mamas and dads walked into this boy and made something of themselves. So what Trump did with that was wild as hell to me. And I and trying to build a wall with Americans that don't do nothing but just come over here and trying to work. That's it. And and I'm I all the Hispanics I know are all cool as hell. They're cool as hell and they happy to be here because they like, yo, we got a chance to make. So <laughs> for what he did to 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 Latins, I think it's weird and I think it's wrong. Same thing with Biden. That speech that he made on the Senate floor made me mad. I don't like it because a lot of my friends, I grew up in the 90s. A lot of my friends, I was a part of the drug dealing renaissance. That is like, this is the thing. People want to ignore and want to look down and make fun of drug dealers and all of that stuff or try to, but it's the same thing as other cultures that have had organized crime that has created a, a, a financial entity for that culture. Doing that, doing that thing, doing drug dealing, Gary was popping, South Side of Chicago was popping, <laughs> everywhere was popping, real stores, it was real places, it was, there was whole malls, Foot Locker ain't never made that much money during, they, I guarantee you, Foot Locker's still trying to recover from the loss of the drug dealer renaissance. It's a, it's a thing. So what he did- You never know where it's going to end up. OK, because I'm like, now, what he's getting, he said, just let him sell drugs in peace. Like, what are we going No, with? I'm not saying let him, I'm not saying let him sell drugs in peace. <laughs> I'm saying the fact that I had friends that went to jail for crack cocaine, mm -hmm. but then there was other people getting caught for powder cocaine and were getting less time. They were yeah. giving people in our community football numbers. They were, it was people mm -hmm. that I knew who grew up it with. Was it was 18. Yeah. And mm -hmm. they was getting 25 years. Mm -hmm. But it was a time when it, it was some kind of dumbass law. I can't remember the amount of years it was. But for every rock you had, it was a, it was a certain mm -hmm. amount of years. That's every ridiculous. rock you got caught That's with ridiculous. was a certain amount of years. But people could get caught with seven kilos of cocaine and be out in three years. OK, everybody crack his now. Yeah, I, so I'm not, <laughs> I'm not justifying <laughs> Kiki crazy. I'm not justifying. I love what the happened. pie. So I'm, I'm just saying what <laughs> Biden was pushing for destroyed a lot of our communities. We helped destroy it, but it helped. It, it also didn't get a chance for brothers to go into jail, come out, and because when people come out of jail, they don't want to go back. Most people don't want to go back and, and reform and change their lives. When you put somebody in jail for 25 years, you're taking their whole life away from them, and it's nothing else you can do about it. It's pretty much a wrap. Yeah. So that's that. That's all I'm saying. That's, that's all. Right. Let me get. I can go. I don't want to get political. Let me get out of here. <laughs> Let's get to some funny stuff. Dr. Dre. I can't wait to hear what Kiki has to say. Dr. Dre, <laughs> to be ex-wife Nicole, has now got in contact with three alleged mistresses and trying to get them to testify against or write a statement or come up with receipts that them and Dr. Dre all had relations. Oh boy, that's bad. What do you think about it, Kiki? She wildin'. Nicole, you need to chill. Like, girl, you should have just took the settlement that you was gonna get, gone about your business, live happily ever after, bank on yourself. I mean, I was so on board with this. I said, he's a billionaire. I said, she did everything right. She waited in the cut. She played the background. She let him get that beat still. And then she like, you know what? My kid's grown. I'm about to divorce you and run off with the bag. I was ready to throw her a divorce party, girl. You gave us all hope. But now you're just fumbling the play. Why would you go? Let me tell you something. You got to make sure that the, the, the mistresses hate him as much as you hate him, okay? That's how, to tell you know, when baby mama start teaming up and being friends with each other, I'm just saying, when baby mama start being friends with each other, you know they both hate you for real. Because usually it's one baby mama that really, really hates you, and then one that's like, she's still the home. You can maybe still smash every now and then. But you got to, you we, ladies, when you team up, everybody got to be on the same page. And clearly... These women are not on the same page because they're not trying to go to court with you, girl. They're not trying to go split the little coin you're going to end up getting because you you wilding. They steady kicking it with Drake probably. So they don't <laughs> want to go to court. 
these girls don't they turn their instagrams private you know i want to go look at their instagrams they turn their instagrams private and everything so nicole you are wilding sis like you are wilding you need to chill period like if you man look mm -mm. Oh, oh, that is wow. awesome, Kiki. And well said, too, because yes. he is fumbling the bag. Zach, were you, after you heard her trying to turn the three mistresses against Dr. Dre, what was your thoughts? I really didn't know that she was doing that. And, yes. Kiki, and Kiki broke it down perfectly, you know. But what I will add is the fact that she she's added, she's coming to, to these girls, and you don't know that these girls are distraught, too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the mistresses may be living a good mistress life. They like what they got going on with Dre. Dre's a little off. They don't want to do too much. He calls. I come over there. I get everything paid for. I kind of chill. I like my life. Yeah. I'm low key. I'm living fabulous. All Dre. I just go holler at Dre when he want me to. And I come back home. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to be the wife. So she's bringing wife drama over to side chicks exactly. and side chicks don't care as much you know what i'm saying that's why they were cheating anyway when yeah. you were the wife so don't try to come get me because your first play was blocked see that's what happened her yeah. first attempt at the money was blocked so now she's like oh my god i need some help let's try to figure out a different case on them and then try to call these girls up and they're like girl we can split the money we can get way more than what you're getting and then she's like hold on girl we ain't friends okay we ain't i got a good thing going don't like please don't make my block hot now i'm in the blogs <laughs> yeah Woo. this that, yeah. is this it's is, a this is ugly she has to relax she has no friends she needs a homie that'll sit her down and say girl you are messing this all the way up yes she don't have no friends she has no friends she's just getting legal counsel at this point yeah. But look, Zach, now let's say this, though. Let's say this. Let me be devil, devil's advocate, though. Now, we all know that Dre knew that she was taking money and then all of a sudden decided to say, hey, she was embezzling money from the company. Sure. Dre does not strike me as a person that doesn't know what's going in and coming out of his, his pocket. Absolutely. Before. For sure, he seems like he's that kind of guy. He knows what's going on. So he's probably like, all right, she's taking all the money. Whatever. Right. Now, <laughs> this is the thing. Now, the wife says, hey, I got a trump card because I've been new about the girls. I've been new. I just ain't said nothing. Mm. All she needs is one to turn. The one. When you got three, that's tough. Three <laughs> mistresses. One mistress is he could probably be cool. Maybe even two. Three, somebody was to get neglected. Somebody didn't get paid. Something didn't get paid for. If she could promise her some certain, some, some type of money, I don't know, because then that what happens is you already know, and most prenups, if you cheat, it null and boils the prenup, voids the uh, prenup. So she, she's she could be end up getting half. Now, this is the thing, if Drake was under the tone of Pone advisory committee, <laughs> I would <laughs> I would tell I would tell Dre the same way I would have told, same way I would have told Tiger Woods. They need me on their team. That's the thing. I I could rip my services out. Cause my call to you is this moment I found, bam. All right, I need, I need at least 500,000 in cash and five different black duffel bags. And that's it. One of that 100,000 is going to me. One of that 100,000 is going to me. And then I'm going, <laughs> and then I'm going to take the other four uh -huh. and I'm going to give three of them to her. And then I'm gonna give them to one of the friends. I'm gonna split the money, the other hundred thousand up with the friends that know what's going on. And we're gonna okay. keep it all quiet. Everybody, you show somebody a hundred thousand dollars in a duffel bag, what? <laughs> Five hundred thousand is nothing to Drake. That is nothing to Drake. It's nothing. Oh I show God. you a hundred thousand dollars in a duffel bag and say, sign this and be quiet. <laughs> and don't put it in the bank. What you gonna do? Oh my God. So no, you can't go. You cannot go down with duffel bags. And, no, you going to blow the man whole case up. What? No, I ain't. I'm going to have a little flip phone. It's going to be a burden. I'm like, Dre, I dropped bag one off. It's already signed off. We got one down. We got one down and two to go and some more friends. We might even get a little oh, money back. So, no. I didn't know you, so I didn't know you was going out there and doing it for him. You going to do yeah, it Yeah, I'm going to go. Yes. I'm going to go. I'm gonna, yes. That's how I got to judge. You that's see, how I got to earn my thousand. He didn't cut his I know how to check. talk to people. He didn't cut I know how to talk to people. Uh-uh. I know how to talk to people. I'm like, look, I was, 
I like once she gets you and then the taxes hit it, whatever she gonna offer you ain't nothing. You got a hundred thousand dollars right now. That's your rent, that's everything. And Dre still wanna fuck with you for real. So look, just take the money. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> look, you know what he been doing for you? This is to tell you to say, I love you and I want us to keep doing this. This is, this is us to be cool. That's it. That's all he said. That's what he said. Look, look, he was sending me a text message. One I read out myself, when I was going to send you a text message, Drake said, I love you. I'm just going to erase the person's name every time and show the new, one, the new name. I just, I just love word? how you put yourself on the payroll. I really admire how you, as a friend, <laughs> if you were his friend, you would put yourself on the payroll. <laughs> go pay a billion dollars. I'm money. your crisis manager. <laughs> okay. I turn, I turn from your friend to your crisis manager. Like, look, folks, I got this. Oh my god! <laughs> All you need is it. Tiger Woods. Look, Tiger Woods. It cost Tiger Woods a half a billion dollars. Woo. I would have took, he had 13 Woo. mistresses. I would have took a million dollars in cash <laughs> and black duffel bags to every one of them bras, excuse me, those women, and everybody would have been happy. <laughs> a million dollars in cash, and that would have did it hood. I'd have put it in 20s. <laughs> <laughs> so it was heavy. <laughs> 20s. I would have added. What? They would have slid a person in there. I may would have sent a person that with it. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> she no. zipped it. She had a new Chanel and a million bucks. Mm -mm. Don't fall Come on, I just, hey, look. A I million mean, cash in all 20 challenges. Um, mm -hmm. right, let's get to this. Um, there's been a lot of funny things that's been happening throughout hip hop. There's always these moments where we pee, we laugh when people trip, they fall, they take bad pictures, or they something was showing. Rod Wave. Rod Wave is a big boy. Rod Wave got on the stage and it broke. Kiki, when you saw this, what were you thinking? I was worried about the brother's safety. You know what? I felt so bad for him. I really did. Because let me tell you something about fat people. It's a few things we're not going to play with, right? The plastic lawn chairs, okay? We not, you just don't, you just don't do it. You know what I'm saying? I will stand up at the whole party like, girl, no, I'm good. No, thank you. Because they just not, they not loyal. Them chairs are not good. So, I felt so bad when I saw this man walk out on this stage and fall. And another, like, it's, when fat people fall, it's hard for us to get up quick. So, like, you know, everybody else on the stage, you feel, they skinny. So they pop right back up, like nothing happened. You, the, the fat friend, somebody got to reach and help you up, and then I look like you single-handedly broke the stage. You know, I felt so bad for this man. Raw way, baby, it, just call me. I, I understand. Oh. I understand. It's what I felt so bad for. Him. I really did. Oh, it's, man. It's Kiki, before we go, Zach, I got to hear some more. I got to hear some more. I got to go down this path a little bit more. That is so what are other things that big people have to watch out for? <laughs> I'm gonna go down this list with y'all skinny. I'm not doing that. That's against the fat people rules. Cause now every party and barbecue you go to, you gonna be looking at the fat girl like, why she ain't sitting down in that chair? So I'm not about to tell y'all the secrets. Just know it's a list of things, okay? And if you offer me something and I say no thank you, just take my no thank you. I don't want your seat, I don't. Cause it won't be the same when I get up. So that's the thing. A ride wave, I feel so bad for you, baby. But it is a funny video. If y'all haven't seen the video, you gotta watch it. You gotta watch it. <laughs> Kiki, you are a goddamn <laughs> just saying. You are nuts. I you are nuts. Dude. I felt the pain. Woo. You are so nuts, dude. <laughs> uh let's get Zach. When you saw Rod Wave take his stumble, uh, what were you thinking? <laughs> Kiki got my jaws hurt. Okay. <laughs> I just <laughs> I did feel bad for him because the the way the stage broke, it really wasn't because of him. He was in front. The stage collapsed behind him, and it went in, and he kind of tripped over and fell back. Mm -hmm. But it was so. But it, the the thing that I will say, see, Kiki always makes it seem like it's hard for big people to fall. It is. You know? <laughs> but he fell. He fell on them backs. His back had like he fell on them backs, and that back was this good cushion. <laughs> He's like, boop. You know what I'm saying? No, it's when skinny people fall. See, our bones collide. When our bones collide with concrete, it's some gotta give. And it's usually not the concrete. It's usually what you hit. It's usually them bones. Bones hit 
bones get hit and they hit harder than that. See, he was he fell like that. He fell with both arms up like a uh, what's the what's the type of bears you used to get in the mall? <laughs> like a Teddy rocks, but I don't know. No, nah, you know what? Build the bears. Yep, he fell like a build a bear. <laughs> he fell straight down with his legs up, and I was like, and he had a lean. He kind of just. He kind of wobbled a little bit. And by the second wobble, they was picking him up. He was good. He fell. But no, he, it's not right, though, Zay. Because, see, it was like 25 people on the stage. Yes, they was a the lot head, of people. But mm -hmm. the headline, because he's the fat friend, was Rod Way broke the stage. It wasn't... And, uh, yes. That guy was on that It was several people on yeah. that stage. But because he's the big one, they're going to mm -hmm. say he broke the stage. Yeah, that's, and that's true. Boy. Yeah. That is true. and that that is that's the fat people with discrimination. Come on, in that. Come because on. he he's not the reason they fail, but he is big. Right. So you know <laughs> he is. I don't care what y'all say. That big dude was the reason that stage <laughs> collapsed. No, when he man. got on that stage. He was like, you know what? I've had enough of everybody. <laughs> just it just went in. It was a wrap. I feel bad for him. I thought it was a. I thought it was crazy. I was sue somebody. The stage. I, the stage would have been like, suffering with just Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> what are we doing? I'm, I'm suing everybody. I'm suing everybody. If I come to your house and that folding chair give out, I'm suing you too. Like, I'm suing everybody. Don't invite me to sit or stand nowhere that ain't sturdy. Uh-uh. I'll tell you the Nikki, what about them white plastic chairs on that's tile? What, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Those are the chairs I'm talking about. Them chairs is not faithful. Don't, big girls, don't do it. Let me let me tell you, don't do it. Just stand up and look cute. Just stand up, hold your plate, and look cute. Yeah, we ain't doing that. She said, Kiki, you pod tonight. <laughs> Kiki, hilarious. You are hilarious, man. Let's get off of this. Let's jump to this. This is pretty funny. We'll go to a relationship question. We haven't done this in a while, guys. Uh -oh. um, do you take relationship advice from your single friend, Kiki, hold your voice. We're gonna go to Zach first. Uh, um, no, no, I don't. I don't take relationships from advice from my friends because I probably am the best in that area with my friends. My friends all struggle. You know, they all got their things. So I necessarily wouldn't take relationship advice from them. Now it's other advice. You know, people would be like, in in my single days, I would take the opposite type of advice. You know, they would have pretty good advice on that, but <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't. I, I don't, what I don't know. Mikey, do you, does she take relationship advice from her? Does she take relationship advice from she her bet, single friends? She bet not. Ooh. Ooh. She bet not. That's <laughs> not good advice. That's not good advice. You don't, okay, I don't think, see, I don't acquit single with being a, not knowing how to be in a relationship. Some people are just single because they want to be single. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, the failures. One, but the, the <laughs> people, no, I don't think that. I don't think that. I think that it's, it's the people who always talking about a relationship that's single are the ones that bother me. That's irritating. You know what I'm saying? If you're single and you happy, be single and happy. But the ones who have to announce that they single every single day, I'm single. Oh, I show wish somebody with this, you know, single life. Like women, stop doing that. Stop. Women say that's that's the equivalent of dudes like flashing money. It's the single post. I'm single post. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. That's the equivalent. The ooh, I'm single is like please shoot in my DMs, light my DMs up. Yeah. I need to see. It. That's what that means. That means just light my DMs up. Or it'd be late, wish I had somebody. Next. Come on, man. Y'all better quit shooting them shots. Like, they just shoot the <laughs> shots. Them thirsty pictures. It's just, it's just thirsty, man. So, wow. no. I wouldn't do, I, I wouldn't take single. I wouldn't, I don't think anybody should give anybody relationship advice. Really? That's interesting. That's yeah, interesting. That's, that's interesting. That's you interesting. Know. I, I, you know what? I might. I, I, I think I agree with you a little bit. I, I'll, I'll save my take for after Kiki's. Kiki, yes. do you think your single friends are the people that should be giving out relationship advice? I don't mind advice from the single friends, but there is a point. Like there's a a limit, right? So if we talking and I'm bidding to you, and you want to just share your little nugget of advice, cool. 
But, you know, if you one of them single friends who just got so much to say about all your friends' relationships, why are you still single? You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's like, it's a limit to it. I Like, I have a good friend. He's single. He's a single one out of our little friend group. But he always checking us in our relationships like, oh, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. But his opinion is always fair. Like, he gives just a little bit and then he move on. But if you have a friend who is always saying something about your relationship, but they're mm. single, it just means they're unhappy and they're overanalyzing mm. what you got going on. So be mm. aware of the single friend who always has something negative to say about so your you, relationship. That's yeah. what I was going to ask. You talking about negativity. They yeah. always throwing that extra stuff in there. Yeah, like, oh, he ain't called you back yet. Or, ooh, what time? Like, you know, like you, you too worried about what I got going on over here. That ain't your business. So, you know, you have to check it and you have to, you know, monitor your single friend. Because single friends do have a lot of relation. I mean, a lot of good advice. Just because they're single at the moment don't mean they've never been in a relationship and they don't have anything to offer. But once they get too critical of your situation, you just got to check it at the door. And that's just how I deal with it. Mm -hmm. I don't listen to any of my single friends' advice. It's trash. <laughs> uh, I think that, Dang. I think that, I think, I think you can listen to me though. I mean, but no. I, I think people, when they get the advice, and I learned this, and mm -hmm. I remember like, and I hate to bring this up, when I was in college, and you know, and I, and I, you know, I'm a fraternity man, I'm a, I'm a member of Kappa Alpha Psi, I'm in there, and you know how it is, Zach, you're an alpha, and you in there, you with your guys, <laughs> and then your girl gets you mad, makes you mad, and you go and vent to the brothers. And the bro's like, yo, man, you need to, you, you need to, man, forget up, bro, we noobs, we need to blah, 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 and this, 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 and then you break up, you be like, you know what? That's right. I am a new. You know what? Go on. Get to stepping. Next thing you know, you find out one of your fraternity brothers is trying to holler at her. You're like, you're trying to holler at her. You said she was bad business, but why are you trying to holler at her? And the, or you see the other thing. You see your uh, you see them trying. They, well, they're doing things opposite of the advice that they told you. Yep. So I always I always say people give you advice of the person that they wish they were. Mm -hmm. They wish they were the person that would say, you know what? Girl, forget you. I'm gone. They wish they was that guy, but really, they're the guy. Like, baby, I, you know, I want to, I want to work it out. Right. Let's, let's go. They give you the advice of the person they wish they were. So, I mean, I take a lot of advice. Very, 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 very small advice for my for my single friends. I would just, if ever I was in a situation where I needed some type of advice, I would, I would ask. And usually, when I hear the answer, I just like, yeah, I should just try to figure this out on my own. It is. <laughs> yeah. It is. It's just. It, it is. Now let me ask you this, Kiki. I gotta ask because I got into this conversation and going back and forth on an Instagram post. I like to comment on people's Instagram posts every once in a while. I do. Hmm. So it was a thing about being a good woman and being submissive. Okay. And I said, I said, well, I said, I was like, yeah, that that seems like it's pretty cool. That, you know, that helps things work out. And that woman went in on me. Oh, did she? In on me. So let me ask you this, Kiki. Mm -hmm. And I'll ask you, Zach, because of course you're married. Do you believe a woman should be submissive to a point? Yeah, I mean, submissive is, it, 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 listen, if you are with the right man, that's very easy to do. Because we all are women and we all like eyelashes and bundles in our hair and pink. And we don't want, I don't want to walk around being the man in my relationship. I don't want to walk around, you know, I, I want a man. I want you to, you know what I'm saying, be the leader. But I can't let you lead if you mediocre. So that's where it comes into, you know, play. Like, if, yeah. <laughs> if you with somebody who ain't, who ain't a man yet, then you can't be submissive to that. You being dumb. That's called being dumb. That's called being stupid, ladies. This is free game. If you with a man who's a leader... Okay, he, you know, if he's a leader, a real man, a provider, a protector, you know what I'm saying, a best friend, then you can be submissive. I, I'm all for that. I want to be submissive, okay? But I'm not going to be submissive to no foolishness now. That's when you you, you got to wake up. So, you know, <laughs> if, you, if you're doing everything you're supposed to be doing, then it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be a struggle for a woman to submit, in my opinion. Oh, there it is. All right, all right Zach, you are the married person on the pod submission um, do you feel like your woman your wife do you believe in submission let's just go into that here's the here's the thing and i hate to be the i gotta give y'all a little marriage jewel um <laughs> i i hate the term 
submissive, period, in a relationship. You know what I'm saying? All a woman is saying when she's saying, like, I don't, some women, that term messes them up. It makes them feel like they're doing whatever the person says. That doesn't work in a relationship. Um, and then I don't like the term, like what Kiki was saying was leader. She was like, I need him to lead. But what that is, that's not necessarily being submissive. That's just natural roles. Okay. So what you, in, in a relationship, you've got roles. Mm -hmm. Roles are going to come out. So let's not call it submission. Let's call it roles. If everybody plays their role for the greater good of the of the union, <laughs> that's all you want to do. You, 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 Kiki. You know that? That's all See, you he said he told me to play my role, and I'm like, okay, Zach, I'm listening. What you saying now? Because I'm trying to get, I mean, you married. That's what I'm you, saying. You know, it's I'm not. It's not you. nobody. Nobody submitting. Nobody <laughs> submitting. We're just all playing our role. You know what I'm saying? And and the role is not necessarily gender specific. I can't I can't tell you what the roles is gonna be in your relationship. You know what I'm saying? And nobody tell you that. That's why I think relationship advice is weak. You know what I'm saying? Because you can't tell me how to play my role in my relationship. That's all we're playing is role, especially when you're married. You know what I'm saying? So if my role, for example, if my role is providing, okay, if my role is protecting, if my role is making sure these lights on, okay, if my role is making sure everybody goes to bed full, okay, that's my role. He said that's provide the, in three different ways. <laughs> hey, he I'm just know. saying. He let you know. He let you know how that check gets like, split up, did <laughs> Come on, yeah, man. I'm, I'm just saying, if that's if that's my role, that's my role. That's right. that's my role. You don't have to be submissive to that. You know what I'm saying? Like you can eat what you want to eat. It ain't like I'm like. <laughs> but that's the thing. I feel like our culture takes Take tonight. Oh, like we can just. It's not being can, a slave. It's not. It's not being mean, a slave. No, that's not what it means. But but you expect. You know what I'm saying? My wife has certain expectations of me. Bad. That's all that is. And guess what? I've got certain expectations of her. And as long as we keep each other's expectations, we good. It ain't no submitting. Ain't nobody submitting. We just playing our roles to make the, like I said, make the union win. And if you got it, see, most people think when they think about relationships, they think about me versus this person. And that's the problem. It, it mm -hmm. turns into a, it turns into a person against the person. Who's going to win? Who's going to be submissive? Mm -hmm. Who runs this? That's not, if you're doing, if you living like that, that's not a, that's not going to be a successful relationship. Y'all going to eventually collide because two people aren't the same. But if you like, hey, I got to put my pride aside for the whole to win. Or if she's like, I got to put my pride aside on this issue for the whole to win. If you keep the whole of the collective as the goal, you're going to always be straight. And I, and I charge you this come advice. On, stuff. Zach. You come on, Zach. Zach. I'm married, oh, man. That's Mary Bush. Uh, yeah, let's I go. Yeah, my thing is the same thing, Zach. I feel like it's in, 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 in that conversation I was having, I was basically saying, um, this is hard when you text it anyway, but it's like, yo, I feel like a little bit what you're saying, a little bit what Kiki's saying, I just feel like it was give and take in a relationship, right? right. And there's going to be things that I'm going to do for you that I'm not going to want to do ideally. It takes me out of my comfort, but I'm going to do it because it makes you happy. And all I would ask is that you would do the same thing for me. And I, I said this a thousand and one times. I and I've had other women, and when I was explain this at our radio station, they may have looked at me sideways. And I said that anybody, anybody can go. Everybody wants to have sex and eat for free, but what happens when when I ask you to do something that's going to take you out of your comfort zone? Whether it's it's something that makes me happy. Same thing for you. Like yo, I like you know, I like going to pod. I like to work work out. I like to go to my job. I like to do, I like to play video games. But when you insert something into my life that I may be like, I gotta go do that now. Am I going to be, am I going to will, am I going to do it to make you happy? Or I'm going to be like, you know what? My, my needs are more important than yours. I feel like as long as it's some give and take, when that give and take doesn't happen, I feel like that's what messes relationships up all the time. Cause like I said, anybody can do all of the fun stuff, go to the show, eat, have sex, do all of that stuff. But when you are asked to do something out of your comfort zone, how do you react? So that's my little take on that. Uh, let's go ahead, man. Final thoughts. Let's do this. Zach Bug, you first. Final thoughts for the pod, my dude. Episode 27. Who won today? That's the pod. That's my final thoughts. Who won the election? Woo. I don't know. We don't know yet. Somebody who winning right now? Oh, my God. Go yeah. vote. Whichever way you vote, man, just just use that. Use Exercise that right, man. I think that's important. Even though you probably already did or didn't at this point. 
you know, you probably, you know, if you didn't, do you feel bad? <laughs> <laughs> you should. All right, that's it. <laughs> 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 All right, Kiki, final thoughts, babe. What's up? Um, you know, final thoughts. I don't by the time you may watch this, we will have a new president or we'll have the same president. Whatever. You still gotta go to work. Zach said that like last time. You still gotta get up and go to work tomorrow. tomorrow. Listen, guys, ain't no need to tear up the city. You know, ain't no need. Listen, look, it is what it is. We gotta start voting. <laughs> we gotta start voting locally. And making sure that the people and judges and people that are in place are the right folks. So let's let's start this now, so we're not waiting two days before the election the next four years. So you know, whatever, however it go, y'all, you still gotta go to work tomorrow. And you know, <laughs> if there's rallies out here, Trump supporting rallies, whoever, don't play with me. That's all I'm gonna say. If you see me in the streets, I ain't the one to play with. And that's it. <laughs> that's all. Damn. Damn. Okay. <laughs> okay. Look. Somebody been hanging he out. He said with the Bo rattles Bill. can run up if they want to. Okay, I'm, re right. I'm ready for you. Baby, Come on, I, I'm licensed to carry, and I don't have no aim. So please stay. <laughs> what? What? What are we? What just happened? What happened? Goodness. You got hood on there. Wow. I. You know what? My final thought is, y'all don't tweak. Don't tweak. Period. Do not tweak, because you're gonna take. They're gonna take your ass to jail. That's all I'm saying. For everybody that watches this around the country, don't tweak. Yeah. Whoever you wanted to win, and if they don't win, and you feeling like you're going to do something stupid, police are ready across the country to lock your ass up. And they are going to put all type of craziness on your record. That will keep you from getting a regular job. And then that will, <laughs> that will mess up your earning power. You don't want that. If you like the way you live it right now, even if you don't like the way you live it, jail's worse than anything you're doing as long as you're walking around free. Don't tweak. All right, there it is, man. Uh, <laughs> that'll do it for episode 27 as we get closer to 30. You already know what it is. What more can I say? <laughs>